This is Michael Mills from the country of Ecuador. Amen. And I uh, just got a few questions here. How did you know that God was calling you into missionary service? God began to work on my heart uh, 13 years before he allowed me to go to the mission field. And he just started speaking to my heart and giving me a burden for lost souls. One of the steps right before we left uh, to go to the mission field, he let me take a short-term mission trip. And the Holy Spirit's very good how he hooks you and to be a long-term missionary. So I took a small, a short missionary trip and helped out in Honduras. And I had to dig a septic tank uh, about 10 feet down uh, to help out the doctor there. And I was just blessed by God. And my heart, looking over the city, was so burdened for the lost souls. And so I came back to the United States and I was, I knew God had called me and I knew he wanted me to do something. I didn't know quite where. And so as we were praying and seeking God, uh, I just had finished my master's in sociology and all of a sudden somebody came along, David Ramirez, and asked my pastor, do you know anybody that can teach sociology in Ecuador at our seminary? And so when God does specific things like that, there's no doubt where you're going and and God is, he's just blessed that way. How long was it when, uh, from when you first received your call till you actually went to the field? 13 years, 13 years. God has time. God has time to work on you. He's working on the people where you're gonna be ministering and he has to put things into us and he has to take things out of us. So part of that 13 year process was, was school up from my undergraduate work to my master's as well. Uh, God's not afraid of education. I see you're wearing a native uh, garb outfit there. You want to just uh, share about it? This is from the Otavalan tribe, and they have this poncho. This poncho is five pounds of llama wool that's uh, hand-woven. The hat, usually the, the, the Otavalan men have ponytails down to their, their bottoms, uh, and to cut their hair would mean they'd be kicked out of their tribe. Well, as you can see, I've been striving to grow my ponytail, but it hasn't gotten very far. What advice would you give to somebody who's preparing himself for missionary service? Uh, prepare, prepare your heart. Remain flexible. Uh, God is going to take you through many new training areas of your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to form you, to forge you. Stay in the Word of God. Uh, I would recommend if you know, have an idea of what country you're going to, start learning the language right away. We went without knowing Spanish and it was very uh, difficult for us. For six months we, we struggled not knowing the language. So if you know, learn everything you can about the culture, learn as much of the language as you can, uh, and allow the Holy Spirit to continue shaping you. Uh, ask Him to give you a burden for the, pe the souls of the people where you're going to be ministering. I think you answered the next question there. A little bit there. In hindsight, after you're on the field, what would you have done differently to prepare yourself? Probably that, the language. I, I think that um, we have an old philosophy that you just go and and sink or swim, or but it would help the culture, it would help us a lot more to have the language. Another thing I'd recommend is take a couple of culture anthropology courses uh, so that you can get prepared and not have so, so much of a shock of going to a whole other culture uh, because the rest of the world is not like the United States and so you've got to learn uh, what their culture is like and not to judge their culture. So I would say those two things would probably be very beneficial is language and culture anthropology. Share an experience that's unique to the country that you minister in. Unique to Ecuador? Um, well, wow, there's for sure the foods that are very unique. Uh, you don't probably eat ceviche, which is cold fish soup here. You probably don't eat that too much. Uh, you probably don't eat kui, uh, which is guinea pig barbecued uh, with a head and claws and on a stick. You probably, so that's probably unique. Uh, I'd say uh, the people. Well, one thing I've very much enjoyed about the culture of Ecuador is that people have time for each other. They're not in a rush and running about trying to support their lifestyles. They, they don't have anything, but they have friendships and they have family. And they take time with each other. They're very polite. Share a testimony of something that God did in your ministry that you can call a miracle. Uh, right offhand, I mean, goodness, you don't have enough tape for what I could tell you. <laughs> but I'll tell you one offhand. Uh, Denise was ministering 
13,000 feet in the Andes, and she had brought a medical team to come and help up there at 13,000 feet, mostly for the children. Well, while they were ministering to the children, doctors giving medicines and giving vitamins and giving free checkups and some health, uh, some heavier issues, they would help as much as they could. A lady came to where we were working as a clinic, and she said, "My mom is very bad off. Uh, she can't come here. Would you consider coming to our house?" And so Denise and the doctor and the lead uh, pharmaceutical guy, he, they all went off to her house. And uh, they said, tell us a story. So the, the daughter was telling the story. Her mom was out on the, the street in Quito, and a bus ran over uh, her foot and didn't stop, took off. The hospital care in Ecuador is not very good, especially if you don't have any money. It's, it's even worse. And so what happened is the doctors in the hospital saw that her foot probably should have been amputated, but they decided to experiment a little bit. And so they would take skin grafts off her, of her back side and put it on her foot, just covering the wound without, without doing proper care on the foot. And then they put it all on a cast and sent her home to die. And here she was in her house, dying. Her daughter came and got the doctor and Denise, and they came and saw the doctor cut off the cast, opened it up, and it was so much gangrene all of her foot, up her calf, uh, that the doctor tried to find a vein to give her some relief, some medicines, couldn't find a vein, um, and the doctor started weeping. A U.S. doctor started weeping, saying, I've got to cut off her foot, I've got to amputate her foot. And Denise said, you, you can't, you can't intervene like that in Ecuador because if anything happens, they'll find you with machetes. Uh, they'll kill you for that in this area. And so, with tears in their eyes, uh, Denise just prayed, God, heal, heal her foot. And led this lady to the Lord, saving knowledge of Christ. The lady received Christ and they all went off and sometimes you, your faith isn't as strong that maybe your prayer took, but they went off thinking she's gonna, she has three days to live if they don't cut off her foot. A month later we got news. The Lord healed her. Healed her of being green. And so that's one of many miracles that God has done. I could tell you about the miracle of the sand from the Galapagos, but you don't have enough tape. Uh, do you have anything that you just want to uh, say to Cooper City? Thank you for letting us be real. Thank you for loving us for who we are. And thank you for allowing us to come and pouring into us. It, it means a lot to us that all of you, everybody, cares about us. Sometimes you go to places that they don't care for you as much. And some don't even want you where you're in their church, to be honest. But you do, and you love us, and we appreciate that. And it's just a time for us as missionaries to get together as, as missionaries and to just have a ref, just a, a, a place of rest. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much.